to see who's going to win today and who's going to start. Starting with the uh, Leinster champions, they start the final with six changes from last year. Among them, goalkeeper David Herity from Dunhamagan. Paul Murphy at right corner back is another experiencing this stage of the championship for the first time after a really good season so far. Team captain Brian Hogan had the misfortune to miss last year's classic final through injury. Today, he lines up as usual at centre-half back. Michael Fennelly in midfield has been having his best season at this level. He's listed to start with Michael Rice, who was a sub last year. Eddie Brennan is programmed to start on the wing in a line which includes Richie Power and Henry Shefflin. And up front, Colin Fennelly, who might well be switched, partners Owen Larkin and Richie Hogan. As you say, alongside me here is Michael Dignan. Who do you want to focus on, Michael? Well, Michael Fennelly, to me, has been key for Kilkenny this year. Um, outstanding athlete. I think the way they have to play today, he's going to have to drop back, help the half-back line um, and the full-back line, but also get forward, and he's you know, averaging two or three points a game as well. So, to me, he's a key man for Kilkenny today. Well, what about uh, Tipperary, the defending champions, with goalkeeper Brendan Cummins set to start his 67th championship match. What a goalkeeper he has been down the years. The full back line shows Paul Curran lining up with Paddy Stapleton and Michael Cahill. And then in front of them is an All-Ireland final newcomer in John O'Keefe, while on the other flank, uh, a possible hurler of the year, of course, in Porik Maher. Shane McGrath plays centre field for the third year in a row, this time with Garrod Ryan in tandem. Tip have resisted making change of the half forward line with Seamus Callanan replaced against Dublin at half time, starting once again. And in the full forward line, team captain Owen Kelly carries much of the threat along with last year's top performer, that's uh, corner forward, Lar Corbett. Michael, your thoughts? Well, Parik Maher, the left half-back for Tipperary, to me, has been the key man this year. Um, he was outstanding all year, but again, the last day against Dublin, Dublin chose not to put any ball in the whole game out his wing, but he still exerted a huge influence on the game, ended up scoring two points from play, and I think you know, you'll know you see Kilkenny today trying to poke the ball down on top of John O'Keefe and probably Henry Shefflin, and trying to keep Parik Maher out of the game because he is a huge, huge influence on this Tipperary team. Thanks indeed, Michael. Well, will it be two in a row for Tipperary, or will the Cats extract their own retribution? They're the... <laughs> Just listen to the cheer. Kilkenny won by five points in 2009. Tipped by eight last September. And many are now seeing this final as a decider in a best of three. The match referee is Brian Gavin from Clara in County Offaly. His first All-Ireland final gets underway. It's the 123rd. So will it be a blue and gold year? Or will it be black and amber once again? On as far as Colin Fennelly from the pass by Richie Power. Trying to cut it out here, Paul Curran. Hand passing it snappily there into the middle, into Garrod Ryan to get it downfield, but only as far as the Kilkenny 65 metre line. Meeting it there was Michael Rice sending it back in once again in towards Owen Larkin, who started at full forward. Questions about that were being asked beforehand. Out once again, it comes via Conor O'Mahony. Out into the centre. Once again taken up here by Kilkenny, this time by Michael Fennelly, about whom there was a slight doubt this morning. The usual rumours going, doing the business. That's out as far as Henry Shefflin, trying to get the opening score for Kilkenny here, being bottled up there by Tipperary. Two men go out to him. Eventually, it comes out here towards Colin Fennelly. Fennelly going forward, and the referee has blown his whistle. It's got to be a free in. Or is that going to be the case? Yes, uh, the referee signalling that it's going to be a free. Yeah, and you're just looking at the Kilkenny back line there, <clears throat> Tommy Walsh picked up Larry Carver from the throw-in, but he's now after coming back out onto the wing, and Brian Hogan has gone back in on him. J.J. Delaney has gone on the other wing, and Jackie Turles at centre-back. Oh, Jackie Turles on Larry Carver, sorry. They're that moving was, all over the place. That was yeah. going to be the big question, wasn't it? Yeah. Who was going to pick up Larry? Well, Jackie, Jack Jackie Turles on him, Tommy Walsh is back out on the wing, he was in, in the corner and they're all moving all over the place. That was rumoured, Michael. Here's Henry Shefflin from 30 metres out, straight as it possibly could be, over the bar, he gets the opening score from the free there. Some of the fans who've been well and truly drenched from the earlier showers. Yeah, Rain is easing a bit now, it's the first time I can remember the floodlights been on here, Michael, That's for an All-Ireland final. We have John O'Brien at wing forward. Seamus Callan in the corner, Owen Kelly's full, so positions again not mean anything except that Bronner Maher is on Tommy Walsh. That's plucked out there, inside towards John O'Brien, the man you were talking about. 
Trying to get it back into the middle there, looking for Shane McGrath, runs back again towards Lark Corbett. Almost on the sideline, and the uh, linesman over there, who's Barry Kelly, raises his flag. Lar had stepped out, it's got to be a line ball for Kilkenny. Kilkenny won the toss and have opted to play from left to right in the first half. Let's watch it again here. Lar just running out of space. Very judicious shoulder coming in as well, helping him out. As regards the breeze, well, because of the rain, the breeze has died down quite significantly. Really is no wind around. Into the middle it comes here. Should have been taken by Shane McGraw, picked up instead by Eddie Brennan. Sent in well towards Larkin. Owen Larkin stealing a march on his man. Larkin, what a good dispossession there, Michael Cahill came across. Comes out towards John O'Keefe. Challenge there once again by Henry Shefflin. A really good opportunity and a wonderful piece of defending. Absolutely, and Gerald, crucially, Eddie, Eddie Brennan, I'm surprised, you know, 33 years of age to start playing forward. Look at Michael Cahill coming across there. And I've heard people in the build-up to the game talking about maybe Michael Cahill not being as good as last year. But I think he's vital. He's carrying a, an injury into the game, but I think he's a vital cog in that temporary full back line that you saw it there. Yeah, he got a, an ankle injury in training during the week. Pass fit to play, however. Brendan Cummins taking this free. Big one down towards Lar Corbett. Runs on beyond him. Going into collected is Brian Hogan under a little bit of pressure, helped out by Michael Fennelly, huge one, 60 metres way down the park once again, coming out to collect it, Owen Larkin, he's got a couple of possessions, looks at the target, fires it over his left shoulder and puts it over the bar, first point to come from play, second for Kilkenny, they've made a very good start. The half journey, you see there, Michael Fennelly picking up a ball just about 40 yards from his own goal, dropping back, helping the half-back line, and Owen Larkin is causing Paul Corn all sorts of troubles, and as I was just saying there, Eddie Brennan, a 33 out on Parik Maher, um, you know, a man with a fantastic record in Ireland finds, and he looks up for it as well, and Kilkenny have made a great start. It's been a very good week for him. His wife gave birth to baby Harry during the week, so well done to Eddie Brennan. Congratulations to the Brennan family. And he's in the starting 15 as well. Right now it's Tipperary with Garo Ryan trying to take the ball out of the uh, tip half of the field, trying to make some headway here. Well defended once again, Michael Rice this time, sending it back up towards Colin Fennelly, losing it, Michael Cahill coming back out. Michael Rice raising the stick for it, but runs on towards Noel McGrath, slipping the hand pass across there, helped on by Shane McGrath, down into the corner towards the captain, can't get there. But Owen Kelly does give a shoulder to Jackie Tyrrell, runs towards Seamus Calden now, Calden on his hands and knees, the number 10 for Tipperary, everybody appealing for it, and the linesman says it's got to be a line ball for Tip. Hectic start, as you'd expect in the All-Ireland final. Seamus Calden there. Tiff's third highest scorer this year in the championship, challenged by JJ Delaney. Ended up eventually going off the Kilkenny player. Line ball, so to the All Ireland champions. And the man who's gone across to take it is Noel McGrath, the 20 year old from Lockmore Castellini. And uh, he is uh, well capable of putting it over from most sideline angles, but hardly this one here. He's almost up against the corner flag. Referee is going to have to go in here because uh, there's a, a little set two between Seamus Calden and his marker there. And referee Brian Gavin, for whom this is a, actually a huge honour taking charge, going into a word with JJ Delaney and with uh, the Tipperary player. From the line ball, it might go back, it's gone out over the end line, it's gone for the game's first 65. So an opportunity then for Tipperary to get their first score. Yeah, and I think they'd be glad of a little breather there over the last minute. Kilkenny started at a ferocious pace, uh, really look up for the game, look a lot fresher than last year. See JJ Delaney and Seamus Callan there digging away, and Brian Gavin, you know, referee that renowned for letting the game flow, but I think, you know, he's, he'd also be careful of if a bad lad did pull a dirty stroke early on, you know, he would be capable of taking decisive action, so I think players want to be careful out there. Well, he'd also want to put down a marker, won't he? Absolutely. Sure yeah. that, uh, but the game has been so fast, I don't think there's been much, much time for anyone to get involved in it. The ball has been flying up and down the field since the start. So it's uh, the turn of Owen Kelly then to take this 65. You can see it's much further out than 65 metres because of the, the angle he's confronted with. So on a pretty still afternoon at Croke Park, Tipperary looking for their opening score in this final. Owen Kelly hitting it. Has it got the necessary accuracy? Not quite. Gone to the left. But it was a very, very difficult shot. There's uh, Declan Ryan, who's won all Ireland medals in three different decades, 89, 91, and, of course, 10 years ago, 2001. But Owen Kelly was a teammate. 
David Herity pucking it out. Up towards Henry Shevlin, trying to put the pressure maybe on John O'Keefe, the least experienced member of that Tipperary defence. Nicely out of difficulty there by John O'Brien. Up towards Seamus Kalman, turned well, 45 metres out. Seamus Kalman running into traffic, leaving the ball behind him, however, and JJ gets it away down the field. Taken by the other number seven, Paulik Maher. Falls, but he gives it out to Michael Cahill. Good link up play, gets it to Garrow and Ryan. Once again, putting the pressure there on the Kilkenny full back line. And it'll be interesting to see just how much cover they managed to bring back there. Tommy Walsh will be attempting to shore it up much better than happened last year when they yielded four goals. Here's Garrod Ryan running into Michael Fenley again. Fenley pursuing Porik Maher there, trying to get to it. In the end, Garrod Ryan very busy in the match so far. Back to Conor O'Mahony, the centre half back. Way down. Calden beaten for it, once again taken by the wing-back, J.J. Delaney from the Fenians, huge one up. Nicely across towards Colin Fennelly, and the 22-year-old hand passes it forward, it was intended there for Henry Shefflin, reading it well was Borik Maher, slipping it back outside to Michael Cahill, and the UCC student drives it a good 60 metres down the park. Picked up here this time by the newcomer for Kilkenny, Paul Murphy, the army man getting into the centre. Again, it's Garrow and Ryan, busy as ever. Challenged there by Eddie Brennan. Brennan picking it up, going to his left. Slipping it forward. Heptic uh, shoulder, hefty shoulder on Richie Hogan. Still managed to get it forward towards Eddie Brennan. Surrounded by Tipperary players. One of the Porik Maher rolls it up beautifully. Controls it neatly, slipping out of the hands of Lar Corbett. Bouncing back to Brian Hogan, who's the Kilkenny captain, of course. This time picking it up very, very low there and doing well as Paul Curran. And the Mullen, a home man, leading John O'Keefe alongside him just to complete the clearance. Early stages of this final, it's going to drop down there between Tommy Welch and Patrick, Patrick Bonner Maher. Watch for that duel. Comes back out to Garrod Ryan again. Looks neat. It's going to drop short. Goalkeeper under pressure. Player in the square. And it's going to be a free out. Well, Jared, the big difference I see so far is Kilkenny forwards are working so hard. Colin Fenley's pace, that's why he was so important. He's causing havoc. They're tackling very hard, and Tipperary have been forced to play high ball into the forward line. Last year, you saw them playing low ball into space. This year, they've been hurried. And Brian Hogan is sitting right back in front, moving back and covering for his full back line. And at the moment, all the Kilkenny backs are well on top of the tip forwards. I was just mentioning, Michael, there, that uh, duel between Tommy Welch and Patrick Bonner Maher. Uh, the bomber really did a very good job on Tommy Welch last year. Well, he did. He dragged him all over the field. But I think Tommy, you know, is playing more orthodox, staying in his position this year. And um, you know, he carried an injury into last year's final two. But at, at the moment, I say all the Kenny backs on top. JJ Delaney back in the corner. Paul Murphy out in the wing. And Noel Hickey uh, on, on Noel Kelly as well in there. And Kenny going very well. Kenny going well. Tiff still looking for their opening point in this match. And we're in the 11th minute already. And again, it's the backs of Kilkenny doing well. That time, Noel Hickey firing it away down the field, up towards Larkin once again, got an unkind bounce there. Out comes Brendan Cummins, slipping it back out here on this near side. Michael Rice watching it. So too is Garroyd Ryan, who's been as tight as he possibly can to Michael Rice. The duels there have been very tasty. Line ball to be taken by the uh, player who teaches at St. Kieran's College. Same nursery in Kilkenny, of course up towards Larkin, will bounce neatly in front of him here. Causing a lot of problems, getting a lot of possession. That was a difficult one for any of his colleagues to take, but it might work yet for Richie Hogan. Tries to make space for himself. And he got two goals in the first half of the semi-final. Fires this one beautifully over the bar. That's a lovely point. Usually a very lively customer, Richie Hogan from Danefort. Beautifully taken. Absolutely, and Owen Larkin again with an assist there out in front of Paul Corn, and he's won three or four balls. But all over the field, you'd have to say that Kilkenny are winning every battle. Their, their first touch is very good, and they look so hungry. And you know, Tipperary really need a score to settle them at this stage. Well, it was always going to be interesting just to see who would settle down in this match first, and it definitely has been the Cats. Michael Fennelly that time sending it way up there. Again, Richie Hogan angling this one beautifully in. Goalkeeper comes out. <laughs> And it's on the line and it's safe from going over the line. Paul Curran got it away, but Owen Larkin had Brendan Cummins in real difficulty that time. A tantalising ball. Back 
time. This time it's Tommy Walsh getting it back here to Henry Shefflin, shooting it from 65 metres out, and he's put it to the right.